Hey guys, Stingley here from Slick Games. Welcome to part three of my RTS devlog. Um, if you've not seen the previous video, uh, just a quick recap. My game is currently horrifically broken. Um, the, the knight's not attacking properly, the cleric's doing weird things. Some parts of it are working. I can build houses. No, I can't. I can build houses if I put them in the right sort of place. Uh, say that and the AI will go and build it but uh, as you can see the enemy AI, the enemy AI rather is um, not working very well and um, yeah I need to make a decision today whether or not I'm going to spend more time trying to sort it out or if I'm just going to revert the changes that I made the past couple of days and go back to where I was at the aim for this week would be to actually have a complete game. Um, I kind of need to complete my game loop so that I can spend the last week polishing and adding in lots of additional bits and bobs like sound and music and stuff like that. So I kind of want this week uh, to actually have a working game by the end of it. I mean, I'd like to have a working game by the start of it as well, uh, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's definitely going to be the first thing I address. But... Um, yeah, I need to I need to be done by Sunday, really, uh, and be in a state whereby I can start polishing. So I've opened up my code base in Visual Studio Code, and I have here my heal target script and my attack target script, and they are very very similar. My logic is that whatever I did to the heal target script, I need to make the same sort of change to the attack target script in order to make the attacking work in the same kind of way as the healing. I think. Um, and my plan after that is to have a look at the walk to building script and walk to target script and see if there are major changes there as well because they, they're the two things I edited the most and they're also the things that are broken the most. So that's what I'm going to do now and I will be back in a little bit with the progress update. I don't want to jinx it but I might I might be, uh, <laughs> I might be getting somewhere. It's been about an hour, and uh, you can see now that my uh, my AI tracks the player correctly. He'll then move on and actually attack the nearest building. Now he's not damaging stuff that isn't that, that's too far away from him. It, it's kind of working. I mean, I've, I've got to get the, the the two units to attack each other next, but this bit works okay. Not wanting to jinx this, but it's actually working. I have beefed up this warrior so he's got supreme health and damage. Um, and he will sit here now and wait for enemies to spawn. The enemies spawn, you can see they're starting to go towards the town hall, but they spot the warrior. They change direction and they go for him instead. He, in turn, will um, see that they're coming and move towards them. He attacks them, they attack him, his health decreases. These are all good things. Uh, I can actually now build buildings. And my little dude will go and build them from any angle. Watch. Ah, oh, he didn't spot them. Okay, why didn't he spot them that time? Okay, I don't know why he didn't spot them that time. Uh, maybe it's not working completely right, um, but it's it's a lot closer. He does turn to attack them, which is good. I literally had this running for about five minutes a moment ago before recording. There they go. He spotted them. Hooray! Right. So he, he will he will move towards them when he spots them within his range, and he's got stuck here because. I think it's because it's being spawned outside of the navigation zone, which is fair enough. But yeah, he walks up and he attacks, which is amazing. Now, let me show you how stupid a thing it was to fix. Okay, so there was a couple of problems. The first problem was that when a building is placed, um, what, what I'm basically doing is I set the collision layer bit for the building's layer to be true. So that means that um, when I'm in that sort of hovering state where I've got a house or a woodcutter selected 
and I haven't clicked it down into its location, it's in a hover state and therefore it won't be attacked. It won't be attacked because it's not detected because this collision layer is set as false. When I place it though, I set that collision layer to be true. So then it becomes attackable, etc. At the top of the script, I have a similar line of code. Um, but this was set as setting the zero bit to be true and not four to be true. The zero bit is the environment bit. So what was happening was, and the reason why the, uh, the enemies weren't attacking any of the buildings correctly, that were already placed, they'd go and attack the buildings that I was putting down because it was setting the collision layer correctly. But the buildings that I have pre-built um, and put into the level already, they would never attack them and I couldn't work out why. And it was because the collision layer bit was set at the wrong value. Such a stupid mistake. The other bit of weirdness exists in the units code. So what I was doing was, in order to stop the units from just wandering off, at the point in time that they are ready, I was setting the target location to be the global position, which means that they should, in theory, just not move. Uh, and again, that's fine, apart from the fact that um, they weren't moving at all. They would just be rooted into place and they would never ever go anywhere. It's almost like this was overriding the, uh, the AI that was saying, go and find the closest building or go and find the closest unit and it was just sat there and they wouldn't move. Um, commenting this out works fine. It does have the side effect uh, now that my warrior will just wander off into the top left corner because he doesn't have a target location. Um, but I can live with that because he's not going to be on the map initially in the first place anyway. He's going to spawn from one of the buildings. So stupid fix, but that works. It's a couple of days later, I have um, balanced my game a little bit now and made it so that you start off with two villagers and no house. Um, this is because I want to start off with a fairly low amount of food um, and the number of villagers that were spawning was just, it was just too much. The, the food just went down far too quickly. So, um, yeah, you now start off with just two and you have to actually build things up yourself so you can, you see, because the population allowed is zero, I'm not spawning any new villagers. So yeah, I've got to actually now make stuff in order to actually progress the game. Now, food is a big one. I need a farm, so I'm missing some wood. Hopefully I can build the farm before everybody starves to death. Okay, fine. So right, I've, I'm in the green for everything now. Um, the other thing I've implemented, um, as you can see, is a farm, and the farm actually produces food when villagers are assigned to it. There is also a barracks, uh, this now exists as well, although you can't actually do anything with it yet apart from build it. I'll show you that in a minute once I've actually got some resources. I've also added in, as you just saw a moment ago, a panel, so that when you actually select a building, which we'll highlight once I've sorted that out, it tells you a bit more information about that building that you have selected. So the house allows five more citizens to populate your town. It's basically the same description as what is in this panel here. Um, the difference is the fact that when you select a building that has housed units within it, you can see which units have been allocated to that building. So you can see here I have two allocated units into my woodcutter. In the farm I have two allocated units. You can't see um, how many more allocated units you can put into it yet, um, but that's uh, something I'm going to be working on as well. Also with this, um, if you click on the release button, at the moment it actually just removes the allocated unit there and you can see I've just spawned another one here because um, I didn't spawn a villager at that location. But the plan is um, when you release a unit from the building they will just sort of spawn outside the front of it. I've just fixed an issue with the uh, food count and I've also made it so that now the allocated units will actually respawn correctly. So now you can select a, uh, a building 
it will show you your allocated units and you can release them from their captivity if you like so that you can use them somewhere else I also said I'd show you the barracks um, this is the barracks can't do much with it yet um, but the idea is going to be that you will be able to um, house units in here and then have options to train them into fighting units based on the level of the barracks and also need to work out some sort of way of upgrading the barracks to different levels. Three days later. Right, it's now Sunday night and uh, I have failed miserably <laughs> to get an awful lot of work done. I've basically been ill for the last couple of days. Um, so yeah, it's it's not been very productive. I've added a new list into my Kanban board for minimum viable product and I want to try and get this done tonight. It's 8.40 at the moment. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get it all sorted, but if I can, then in theory I should have a complete game loop. And whilst there's still a lot still to be done, and there's still a lot that I've got in progress, um, if I can get this sorted out, then at least the game is playable. Okay, we now have a game over screen. Um, it doesn't look like much at the moment, but it exists. There's also a similar winning screen. Um, I've got a beautiful main menu screen and all of my buttons and stuff work. Um, in the game now, I've done some work on the UI for the build menus. So you can see here, I've now got icons for the buildings. When you actually construct a building, same sort of thing as happens before. But now the, uh, the UI for the building selection also has a much nicer looking thing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's looking a bit better. Um, I think I might keep this as a black background. I tried playing around with having a sort of a panel thing behind it, but it didn't work very well. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to keep that as is. Uh, I obviously need to um, add in some icons for the actual units, and that's what I'm going to sort out next. Just before I do, though, I thought I would um, highlight this frankly awesome website, gameicons.net. Uh, there's absolutely loads of icons on here, including, as you can see, the hut that um, I've used. It remembers your presets and so forth, so I've already obviously put a brand background on this, but it means that I can find anything I like and make it into an icon, just like that. You click PNG, job done. I've now got it so that the barracks allows you to train units. So you can see here, if I've got it selected, I've got no units housed. Um, if I put a unit in there, I can now train units and if I put two villages in there I can train multiple units. It's Monday and I have horrifically failed to meet my target of uh, getting a minimum viable product playable game loop working in the game. Um, I'm pretty close though so next step is to sort out the enemy units at the moment they're just stupid red Godot icons. Um, so here are my um, my characters that are in the game at the moment, my warrior and my knight and my cleric, and I have made evil versions of them by basically making everything red and slightly darker. So I'm gonna carve these up now and put them in the game. I've quickly used LDTK to create me a map of my island, and this looks pretty boring, but the idea is that I'm going to um, put some paths and stuff within it. Interestingly, the um, importer that I use, the LDTK importer, um, and I've used it in lots of things. It doesn't work with the newer version of LDTK, the version 1.2.5. Um, using 1.1.3 works perfectly fine, and in actual fact, this map was generated in 1.2.5, and then I'm just using a uh, an older version of LDTK to save the file so that it um, can be imported into Godot. It's weird. And here's what that looks like in the editor itself. I, I've got these little splodges here, um, as you can see. And what these are, are um, basically areas that I want trees to spawn. I've got this new function here in my world script, func spawn trees. Uh, and what that's doing is it's simply looping over the areas in those tree areas, getting the location, the shape of each of those um, areas, which are all circles and getting the radius for that. I've then nabbed a function that's actually supposed to be ge for generating a random point within a sphere. Uh, I've commented out one of the lines, <laughs> so I've returned a vector two instead. And um, I'm using that to basically get my random tree position where I'm spawning my trees. 
So in game, you can see I've got a little clump of trees over here now, and down here is a little clump of trees, and more trees over here, and they look pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do some work to make these look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, um, changing the scale of them and, uh, and the colouring as well, I think, but uh, this works fairly well. Uh, and with that, this sort of vertical slice or minimum viable product, or whatever you want to call it, is actually complete. Um, I can now actually play this through. Um, I will get raided by enemies at some point if I don't hurry up. And I'll also run out of food thinking about it. I might not have time to sort this out now. Um, I've got to tweak all the values and make it so that you know the game's actually playable and enjoyable and so forth. But that's actually quite difficult to do without actually playing the game and try and work out um, what I need to do to actually improve it. But by and large, it, it's it's working it's working pretty well, um, considering that this time last week I basically uh, broken the game completely. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's pretty good actually. I quite like it. Anyway, if you've been watching this video, thanks very much. Um, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. And hopefully, I will see you in the next video, which will be the completion of this game. See you next time.